Today I'm going to be working again in my large Rangers Dilutions art journal. And last time I did a paper art doll parade, I had this pretty girl in the parade and she didn't find a home and so I think I'm going to give her a home in my art journal because I have a really fun idea for her. I really love her. She's got a movable arms with some playing cards and I used a coffee filter folded back and forth and sewn on my sewing machine to make her little peplum and her little gathered skirt and she's got fuzzy hair and feathers and I just I love her so she's gonna go on my art journal and I like to do her looking in because she's looking this way I kind of wanted a doll on this side but she's looking off the page so she's gonna have to go on this side because her glance is going that way so she's gonna go about right here on this side of the page and I'm gonna do a fun border and then I've got a really fun idea again for a saying that'll go with her and then something else another fun little element to play around with so stay tuned and I'll show you how I make my art journal page so to get started of course we always focus on the background and on most of my art journal pages I do I complete the whole background in color so there's always a colored background colored background so I thought for this time I want to leave some of the white area and it may or may turn out good you know how you play around in your art journal sometimes it turns out really fun so what I'm gonna start with since she's gonna go over here and I'm gonna have a border on this side here so what I want to do is to take my pencil and I'm gonna draw some swirling lines as guides so I just want to have some sections where I can put my words and my saying and my journaling to myself and I'm just doing a light lines so after I draw this on I'll show you closer Okay, so that's what I've come up with are some swirling lines. So I want to decide where I want my journaling and I think that I'm going to have words on this second section here, the middle section here, and at the bottom here. So that would leave this section, I'm putting a little X, that's going to be words, and that's going to be words. So this section and up here, so there's three sections that are going to have some color. The one up at the top, the one here, and the one here. And I marked them so I know what I'm doing so I don't get off track. But what I think I want to do is I chose some colors of paint that are going to go well and make my my art doll pop. And she's got a little bit of yellow on her so I chose a really super super bright yellow. And there's red but I don't want to use yellow and red, I want to use orange. So that's a color that complements the yellow and red. So I'm going to use orange and yellow as my colors that I put in these spots here. And then these spots I'm going to leave, the other spots I'm going to leave plain, the cream colored, and I'm going to do my words in those in my journaling. I'm going to move my sweet girl off to the side so I don't get any paint on her. And I'm going to start in this section here with my yellow paint. And I'm going to use a damp sponge and start to apply paint. Start off here and I'm going to erase my little X marks the spot so it doesn't show through this yellow paint. And I'm using a spray bottle and a soft sponge and I just dampen my sponge. I love to do that. And then I'm going to apply my paint. And I think I have an idea of what I want to do for these. So it will be kind of fun. So I'm going to just apply my paint and I'm trying to stay as best I can within these lines. It's okay to go a little bit over because I'm going to use a paint border pen to make those stand out better. So they'll have paint border. So if I go slightly over the edge, it's not going to be the end of the world. But I think this will be fun. So 
I'm applying my paint and I'm going to start with that yellow spot. I want the yellow, the main part behind her to be yellow because it's really going to make the art doll stand out. I love adding art doll paper dolls to my pages as you know. They just give it the layouts, personality and character. And I love the movable parts. So it's fun to make a paper doll. You can do a flat one and glue it right to your page, or you can do one that's off the page with movable parts and still glue it on. Okay, so there's my first layer, and I'm going to let that dry before I move on and do more in that section. So what I'm going to do in that spot is instead of adding other colors on top of it, I'm going to add other tones of yellow and use um, some things to make design and texture and some stencils and things. But all the colors I use are going to be in the yellow family. So it's gonna be very subtle, but it'll be really pretty and it'll show some interest and texture. You could always do a different color, you know, do your orange over it, whatever. But I wanna keep my colors divided. So that's what I'm gonna do, which is kind of different. So trust me on this, it'll be really cool and fun. So I'm using a bright yellow, a pale daffodil. These are our just apple barrel cheap paints. I've got our teases in a lemon yellow and a mid yellow. So there's four different yellows. If you don't have a lot of paints and you only have one yellow, you can always add white or just a tiny, tiny speck of black to make tones of yellow because that's how you make them. You make them lighter or darker based on adding a little bit of white or a little bit of black. But if you don't want to mix them and you have other brands, mix and match, throw in a bunch of colors and give this a try. Okay, I've chosen some small stencils that have some really bold patterns. So I want the patterns to be big enough and bold enough that they show up. I like this little honeycomb looking thing here. I'm gonna use that like these because that's kind of zentangle looking and this will be a really neat pattern that'll show up. So. You can use any stencil you want if you're going to do this, but choose something that you think might stand out. So what I'm going to do is to just, again, mist my sponge with some water, put some paint down on my palette, which I use an old magazine as a palette because I can peel it off and throw it away. And then I'm just going to stencil some design onto my yellow spot. So I'm still watching that I'm not going over that pencil line, to trying to keep it inside the space that I've created for this. Let's see how that just, let me hold it up so you can see it better. The yellow on yellow is going to be really subtle and pretty and that pattern is going to show. So I love that. That's what I had in my mind to do. And now I'm gonna use another color of yellow. So I'm just going through those four colors and doing some fun stenciling. So it's gonna be very subtle, but it's still gonna show with a pattern and that's what I want. It'll be all yellow, but it'll have pattern to it. So there's a second color of yellow and a different pattern. And now I'm going to do a third color of yellow. I think I'm going to go with the really light one. I'm going to use that honeycomb. It's nice. It kind of looks like a flower, but I like the shape of the design. So this is just playing around and doing a little bit of stenciling. That, thir that fourth color, I think I'm going to use something that makes a pattern instead of a stencil. up and show you. So 
So see, you can see it, and it's still yellow, but it's just subtle design. It's a great place to start. For that last color paint, I'm going to use this. This is just a silicone hot pad for using in your kitchen for um, grabbing hot plates. And I use this all the time because it's got little fingery things on one side and little knobby things on the other. So it makes great texture. So I'm going to use both sides of that to create some texture. So what you basically want to do is just apply some paint to it and then just press it down and create texture with it or pattern. And this yellow is really close to the original yellow. So it's not showing up terribly well, but I like it because it's still making pattern. I'll show you. See if you can see that. It's very subtle, but see that pattern and texture? Super cool. So now I'm going to let this dry for now and move on to the next step, which I'm going to do the same exact thing here and here, but in oranges. People often ask, what stencil are you using and where did you get it? I got this set of stencils for my birthday this year from, I believe, my mom. And I think she got them on Amazon, so I will see if I can find them and put the link in the description box below for this cool set of stencils. And there's like 32 different stencils and they come on a ring. So it's pretty nifty. So I've got that. And then the other nice thing about this silicone mat is this uh, pot holder is because it's silicone, paint washes off super easy. So same thing in my other two sections. I'm going to apply a base color with a damp sponge. And I'm going to make them each a little bit different from each other. So I'm just spreading out some paint making a nice thin layer. I don't want it too solid because I am going to stencil patterns over it so that's just my choice. But So I'll go ahead and do those two sections same way, a base color and then taking other colors of orange and stenciling over the top and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. So I used two different colors of orange in each spot because that'll just add some more interest too. And I wanted to show another fun thing. I think I have this in another video, but you may not have seen it, so I'll show it here. You can take your sponge, find a flat side. This is my damp sponge that I've rinsed off from applying paint. And you can take your paint and apply it right onto your sponge in a pattern. So I'm going to make a swirl pattern with my paint and then you almost use this sponge like it's a rubber stamp. So here's my swirl and I'm going to go in here and press and lift, press and lift and I'm turning it so I'm creating that fun looking swirl pattern using my sponge. Then of course letting it dry. These Dina Wakely paints work really well for that too because they're easy to apply. So I'm going to apply a different color in a smaller swirl pattern onto my sponge. Like that. Put my protector underneath. And go up here and stamp. Super fun. And I'm going to let that paint dry nice and thick like that because it's cool. Makes cool texture in those sections. So instead of using stencils on these two, I decided to just go with the sponge stamp technique. Looks super cool. Gonna let it dry now. And since this is just paint, you can use your heat tool to dry it if you'd like. If you don't have the patience to wait, 
go ahead and dry it. So once this is dry, you're ready to make some more marks and you can go over acrylic paint with all different kinds of pens. Pens, colored pencils, so you can use Sharpies, Arteza brush pens, Tombows, uh, Posca pens, anything like that to go back over this and do some mark making. So what I mean by that, let me show you, is I'm going to turn this over. If it's easier to work, flip it over so it'll be right next to your hand and you're not reaching across your book. So what I'm going to do is I think I'll take this Posca pen in orange and I'm going to come in here and where this has a really fun design, I'm going to add to it. So do some more mark making. I'm going to come in here and maybe even do some Zentangle style design by drawing some patterns and shapes and just adding to this section and again I'm still using orange on orange because I'm going monochromatic. Let's see how that just adds something fun and I can take my Tombow or another pan. I can come in here and do a shadow around this paint that stands out. Just add some lines and shadows. And Tombow is a water soluble, so I could even take my water brush now and blend that out a little bit instead of it being a harsh line. Come up to that edge and blend it out. Just making it a little more interesting. So let me hold it up and show you. So see it has, get that to focus. So see how I blended that out and it just made a really pretty shadow against that paint that stands up that's really textured. And then this Posca pen just added some more orange. So here's texture here and you can go in there and do a little shadowing if you like. And remember, shadows are only on one side of a design, not on both. Blend it out with a water brush, not too wet. And just look at how fun and interesting that looks. You can even take an orange Sharpie and do some circles. Because what you're doing is just mark making. You're just adding some interest and making this look like a really cool, fun, interesting little section. Pretty fun. So I'm going to do all three of those colored sections and then come back and show you the next step. So here are my little doodle spots and they look really really cool they look better in person than on camera but it's just fun and interesting i like how it looks now what i'm going to do next is take a posca pen in a chisel tip so it's got a flat chunky chisel tip and i'm going to make these lines and go right over that pencil line and the chisel tip works awesome for this because i can make a nice even black line to create kind of a blocked in section where I did my color. So there that is. So I'm gonna fill in the lines all around these sections and then I'll come back and show you my next idea. I love how this looks, that black chisel border looks great. I like how when you use a chisel Posca, it makes an even line, a nice fat even line. So it's going to be so cool for the journaling and the lettering. So when I take my doll and I put her into place, I love it. It's turning out even better than I thought. And I had an idea for a border and I'm not going to do what I originally planned because I think it's going to be too busy with the other idea, the other element that I want to add. So I'm going to leave it just like this and going to go on, move on to the next step. Now I can't put my lettering on until she's glued down to the page. So that could be the next step is to go ahead and glue my doll into place. And I'm going to use art glitter glue and I want her arms to still be movable. So, and her legs are stationary. So 
the only part that's movable is her arms. So when I put glue, I avoid that area that gives room for that arm to move. And I'm going to glue her everywhere else. And since she's not an ornament any longer, I can take off these ribbon that was for a hanger. And then just apply glue to all the stationary places on my doll. And glue her into place. Super cute. The next thing I'm going to add to my page is some spinning hearts. So I'm getting some uh, pattern papers and some textured cardstocks. This is a red that's shiny. This is a red that's glossy. This is a red that's got some lines to it. There were scraps of things and some black embroidery floss. And I'm going to make some really fun spinning hearts. So to start with, what I want to do is to just take my scissors and cut a heart shape and you don't want it to be too big but you don't want it to be too small and if you want to fold your stuff in half and cut it you can do it that way I'll go ahead and do one like that just fold it in half so I don't care if it's got a line down it and then cut your heart shape if you don't think you can do a cute freestanding then do it this way so now I've got my heart. And then to do the second side, it doesn't matter. You can put it over anything like this. This would be great to put this over. And that's how you can cut the second one. But what you want to do first is to take your embroidery floss. And I'm going to just tie a knot at the end. And I think I'll double knot it. So you go through the hole, your loop twice, and that makes a stronger, bigger knot like this at the bottom. And that's going to go at the bottom of this heart. So what I want to do is flip my heart over, use my glue, and put a line of glue down the center of the heart. And then go around your edges with glue because you're going to glue it to your backing piece. And you're going to lay that you're going to lay that little knot at the bottom where your point is and put your string right in the middle just like that. And then glue it to your backing piece. And now I can take my scissors and be careful not to cut your little tail off, move it over because you want your tail on there. I can take my scissors and come in and cut around this because you've already got your heart shape there. Be careful not to cut your string. Avoid your string. You need that string. And now I have the back and the front and my string down the center just like that. To this string I want to add a second heart so I'm going to come up here a little ways and I'm going to make another knot. And the knot's just to help it stay in place. And this time I'm going to make a smaller heart. And if you have heart shaped punches, go ahead and use your punches. That makes it easy too to get some different sizes. So I got a heart shape, a different size and a different shape. And then I found what I want to use for my backing. So I'm going to punch a second one. And then again, 
glue them together just above that line just above that knot I'm sorry you put the knot at the point put the line down the center some glue around the edges put your string in place first And press your two hearts together. And I'm going to add a third set here and I'm not going to make the knot this time I think because this is a smaller heart. I think it'll be fine it'll stay put hopefully. Again, go down the center where your string is going to go, then around your edges. Put your string in place up the center. And then glue your second one. And I'm spreading that glue out to the edge to make sure it sticks really well. Line up your second one. And there you go. So now I've got three hearts on this string. And you can spin it like this. So attach to attach this to the page, I'm going to use a heart at the top. And for my heart at the top, I'm kind of using this whimsical punch and punched a piece of card and then I want to take my paper piercer and poke a hole in the center of this heart with a paper piercer just like that. Now on this end I'm going to go ahead and feed my embroidery floss through a wide-eyed needle and I'm going to go from the back, the plain side on the back, because you're not backing this top one, the back to the front like this, just so that I can easily pull that floss through that heart like that. And now I want to figure out where on the page I want my spinners to be. And I think I'm going to put them right here. So I need to pull this string until I get this the length that I want it. And I think I'm going to go a little bit longer like that. So that's where I want it. So now I'm going to just move that heart down a little bit and right where that spot was make a double knot. Double knot going through your loop twice. And carefully feed that knot up to that heart. So then what you're going to do is flip this over and add some glue and glue it into place on your page. Make sure you've got that knot right at the hole. Put your string down the center like that. Find where you want it and add it to your page and hold it in place till that glue sets a little bit. And you want to be careful and let this totally dry before you try spinning it, otherwise you're going to tear it off the page. And then you can take your string and just cut it like that. So there it is anchored to the page. We're going to let it dry. And then on these hearts, I think I'm going to add a few little elements. So I'm going to take a smaller heart and take some different paper, like going with black. I'm 
got a little black striped heart on top of the heart. And this glossy cardstock, I can scratch off my little glue lines, but there's a heart on the heart. Look at how cute that is. So just add some fun elements. You can put glitter, you can use glass beads, all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to decorate these hearts a little bit while this is drying, and then I'll come back and show you. For a fun decorating idea, I'm going to take some red sparkle Nuvo drops, and I'm going to do a heart on the heart. And sparkling Nuvo drops. And then I'm going to put a tidy tray underneath carefully and pour on some glass beads. And let that dry. I also took some of these ultra thin um, hearts that are just like confetti. See how they're really sparkly and they're just little sequiny confetti hearts. They don't have holes in them. And on the next one up, I just put some dots of glue and glued some hearts into place with some tweezers just to make some some more sparkly elements and I'm not touching this because I'm letting it dry but each little heart's going to have something fun and different on it. So here are my cute hearts so far. That one's got glass beads. This one's got glittery hearts, sparkly hearts. That's got some Nuvo drops around it. I need to do the other side but this is so far my heart spinner. I love it. Super cute. Now I'm going to go ahead and add the words to the page. So I'm going to use pencil to lay out my saying first. I'm not always a fan of penciling it out first, but I've got a lot of things that I want to say, and so I think this time it's important to get it right. So I'm going to pencil it, and then I'll show you. So now I'll go ahead and do this in Posca Pen, and uh, what I like to do is make certain words stand out with different colors, like the word heart that's in a heart and things like that. Um, word found that I did in a bubble letter. Things like that I do in a different color. So you'll see when I'm all done what I do with my lettering and then I'll show you the final page. Here are my words that I put in the white spaces, the empty white spaces, and I'm really glad that I did this layout that way. I've never done that. Usually, like I said, I do all color. So I like the broken up colors and the cream area to have the lettering in it and to use some of those colors in my lettering to make it pop. There's some blue, royal blue within the uh, playing card. So I added some royal blue in here just to tie it all in together. And here is my saying. When it comes to matters of the heart, don't settle. If you haven't found your perfect match, be patient. Put you first. Take your time. And then behind here, don't let any old trickster make a smooth play for your hand. Hold on to all your cards until you are ready to play them. Perfect for my trickster paper doll that's got cards. And her story is that she uh, tries to steal your heart. And I added some more feathers to her. So she's got some black feathers that I added to her little hat. My spinners are decorated with some glitter. And some more Nuva drops up here so that every side has something fancy on it. And when it spins because it's glittery, it's really fun. And it um, shows off really well because it's got sparkly things on it. So that's my page. I hope you had fun and enjoyed watching me create this. And it maybe gave you an idea of something to do in your art journal that's different. Create a spinner. Um, you can do so many different things with the spinner with different shapes like butterflies, flowers, circles, squares that are decorated, all kinds of things to create a simple but fun spinner on your art journal page. So I thought that was a fun 
addition to this and it'll lie flat when I close my book. So give that a try and see what you think about making a spinner. And of course, always make a paper doll. Add it to your page. Lots of fun. Art journaling is a blast. It is something fun for everybody to give a try and I hope you do too. So go make some art because art soothes the heart. And thanks for stopping by at Twisted Art Designs.